Hello. So in this video, um, what I'm going to do is, and Allie, if you want to come a little closer, um, what I'm going to do is I, I ended up going with this uh, still life that was in the previous um, uh, demo that I did, and um, I did one with a little bit more of a classic. Now, in, in your demo or in your still life, you might omit things. You'll notice um, in my drawing that I changed things a little bit. Um, I kept the basics, but I'm going to change the background. I think I'm going to go just to the dark background, and I changed the layout of the table a little bit. Um, I like to have a photograph, and if you're not able to get to um, Walgreens or whatever, I totally understand. You can easily work from your phone or iPad or even your laptop computer screen. Or if none of those work, you could just leave the still life up and draw directly from the still life, which actually is probably the best way to do it. So um, what I've done here already before the video is I've stained my paper, which is, this is the Reeves BFK with the deckled edge. I broke my chalk in half and I stained it out. Now I did use quite a bit of a half. I used about a quarter of my chalk. So we gotta be careful there. Um, I went ahead and laid mine out quickly. Now I did it quickly, but I, um, I want you to take this part seriously. I would recommend using vine charcoal. Do not use pencil, use vine charcoal. And just lightly lay out your still life. Put all the big things in that you see, um, documenting the structural changes, the light and dark changes and things like that. Um, I stained it down to half tone, just like the, uh, the sphere. So we are gonna wanna go higher, so we're gonna wanna go lighter, and we're gonna wanna go darker. So I'm gonna do a little bit of that today. Typically, um, what this is called in painting is blocking or scumbling. But for us today, it's just going to be kind of like roughing in some of the, um, some of the things that we see. We want to be careful um, to think about, now my photograph is still in color. Probably a good idea to go ahead and use a black and white filter. It'll help you a little bit. But um, we want to go ahead and kind of determine where our half tone or our mid-tone is and where our black is. So we want to kind of get the ball rolling with this by lightening things up a bit. Okay, and again, I'm just kind of working in roughly. So I'm going to come in here and I don't want, um, I want to sort of identify white. Okay, so let's say if I identify white as being right before this avocado here. Okay, so I'm going to go as light as I can get it right there. Good. So that kind of a starts to establish the lightness there. Okay. Notice how I've taped my paper down here. Um, probably not a bad idea to do that. Um, it, uh, it'll keep it from moving, especially in this phase of the drawing where um, you're going to be erasing kind of hard and it might want to uh, move around on you a little bit. If you don't do that, obviously you can just hold it down with your hand. That works too, but uh, probably going to have a little bit better luck if you tape that down. So, always looking at my photo as I'm making my moves here, but I'm just going to come in. You want to be careful not to let your drawing get wet, okay? Um, so now I'm going to already come in with this kind of what I know to be uh, lighter than... Um, Definitely lighter than uh, the gray that I've got down here, the mid-tone, but um, still darker than white, definitely. So I'll come in here, and I'm just going to kind of lighten up my foreground a little bit, looking at my photo as I go. Okay, just kind of getting things laid out a little bit. Um, let's see, the other part of my apple is pretty light too. My avocado is pretty dark. Um, I can go into the handle of this uh, coffee mug here. Get, it's maybe not quite white, it's probably not quite that light, but it's pretty light right there. The, um, the tablecloth behind the mug is a little bit lighter than most parts of the mug, not all of it. It kind of has a shared value in some areas. Down in here is deeper and darker. That's all going to be darker. Okay. Up on my wine bottle. As soon as the glass starts here, I get pretty light. So I'm going to come in like that. Okay. I'm going to get that light in there. All right. I'm going to come along here. 
and there's a light down in through there, so that's part of the glass there. Just roughing this out right now. Nothing, nothing really, not a whole lot of detail going on. Up on my, um, my pineapple, again, I don't want to go quite white. If you're about to make it white, just stop yourself and say, wait a minute, is the, is the um, leaf of a pineapple white? No, it's light because this really bright light is hitting this leaf, but it's definitely not um, white. So it's just light for now. Let's get in here and lighten up some of these edges like that. Okay, I don't want to get too sloppy. I don't want to get too far away from, stick with my drawing, make sure that I'm not, you know, kind of jumping ahead and skipping good information. I want to pay attention to what I'm doing. Over here on this coffee mug, I can get a little bit lighter, it looks like. Kind of down in here a little bit lighter. Again, the avocado is pretty dark. Uh, that's actually pretty good for taking out some of my lights here. Looks like the fork here, the tines of the fork, get a little quite a bit lighter. And again, we can kind of play with that later. Let's get this in here. That's that's about it. I think I'm seeing just about everything. Maybe this um, the rim of this glass is pretty light. Kind of search around for your lights and go ahead and document them. And don't fake them, though. You always want to draw what you see. You don't want to just make up stuff. Okay, I mean, there's some kind of some lighter things in the, um, in the uh, pineapple here. I don't know. Ellie, what do you think? Uh, yeah, maybe on the avocado it does get a bit lighter. A little bit of an optical illusion. Okay, now in in, uh, in uh, the spirit of trying to move this along, I'm gonna go darker. Like I said, I want I'm choosing to go with a darker background, so I'm gonna get darker here. Don't have a ton of charcoal here. I'm trying to stick with the same amount that you guys have. Apologize, I didn't give you more. Okay. And again, this is just the rough version. Because you're gonna go through this in a bunch of phases, and this is just your first phase, where you're gonna just kinda rough in I'll smooth this out here before this video is over. Okay, so I'm going to come over here. A oh, little piece of rough all this in. Okay, I'm just kind of getting it. I don't want to be too sloppy. I mean, I'm, I know I'm not doing final, you know, detail here, but I, I want to keep it keep it organized and, and draw what I see. Now once I've done that, I'll take a paper towel. I have a paper towel handy. And I'm going to go in. I don't want to take away too much of this, so I'm going to go with my finger rather than a paper towel. And I'm just going to kind of get this dark background going. Just to kind of get an idea as to what I'm drawing here. If you have a lot of dark areas in your drawing, you you're, feel free to cut the size of this down a little bit. So you don't have to use this whole paper. And then you'll assure yourself that you're going to have enough charcoal. And again, I, I wish I had more charcoal to give you. I just didn't have it in time and it was going to take forever to get here. So, so I'm going to deepen and darken this a bit. Okay, then I want to go into my drawing here, okay, and again, being very detail-oriented or aware of the important lines in here, I'm going to start, in the same way that I blocked out my lights, I'm going to start bringing my darks in. Okay, now again, I want to be careful that I don't just make things black if they're not black. So if they're light, I make them light. If they're dark, I make them dark, but I... 
I keep track of light and dark, black and white. Over here on this pineapple, okay, there's there are some darker, we get down into the bottom of the pineapple, and it gets pretty dark down there. Maybe not quite black, but it gets pretty dark. And I can kind of just smush that in just so I can start to see my drawing a little bit here. Some of these leaves are going to come in here. And again, these are going to, that's going to take some time up in there. So I'm going to hold off on that for a bit. But just to get the idea, so I can start seeing my light and dark ratios. Okay. I feel like my apple is pretty good at this half tone. I'm going to leave it alone right now. Since this light or this um, glass, I can see through it, I'm seeing some of my pineapple right through the glass. Okay. And then, of course, I've got the black background, so we'll put that in there. This fork and knife are actually pretty dark, or fork and spoon, I should say. Okay, so we're going to sneak that in. Come around here, and again, we're going to need some detail work. That'll be in future videos. All right, that's that there. We get pretty dark along here. Again, not necessarily black, but let's get the dark in there. Over here on this fork, and again, kind of, kind of just clumpy right now, just to get it up and running. There's my fork there. Um, I get just a little bit darker here from the shadow from the. Um, pineapple here. Down in this area where the uh, apple is, I can get a little bit darker. Just to sort of block that in for now. As we said, that avocado actually gets pretty dark. It's a little kind of underexposed here. Okay, so we want to get our avocado in. Get it pretty dark up in there. coffee cup just a little bit darker and again we can, we can uh, improve that later but right down there it gets a little bit darker over here we're a little bit darker and it kind of comes up gets a little bit darker on the arm of, or the handle of that coffee cup I wanted to go just a bit darker here where there wasn't uh, light so again, that's just where the tablecloth sort of folds over. We've got this uh, dark shadow here. You kind of get the sense that you're sort of like redoing a bunch of spheres. And again, we don't want to get too carried away with detail work, but let's go ahead and you can fix your corners there. You got that tape. So in a, in a relatively short time, it's going to take you a while to draw this out with your vine charcoal, which is that little thin charcoal. But in a relatively short time, you can start to um, see your drawing emerge. Now this drawing needs a lot of time still. I mean, I'm going to have to spend hours on this to really get that photographic, heavily, heavily detailed look. I'm going to have to get my number two pencil eraser out and the vine charcoal and slow down and really take my time. But if you pay attention to the lights and the darks in the drawing, okay, and you, you uh, pay attention to the, the, the details that are needed, you're not skipping over details, you're not making generic details, and you lay them all in there, you can start to really um, put a drawing together that in a relatively short time, it's going to start to look like that photo, okay? So that's our goal. This is just the, the beginning process of this, staining your paper, laying it out with the vine charcoal, and then just blocking in your lights and darks and start, start to commit to value, assigning values, assigning darks where you need a dark, light where you need a light, those are two important ones, and then the mid-tones are gonna be the ones that settle between that brightest stuff and the darkest stuff. So you can start to see why when you created your still life, you um, set it up so that you would have lights and darks. It's easier to draw that way. So I hope this helps to get you started. Um, have a restful um, 
a long weekend here. I'm going to post this tonight. It's Thursday. If you get a chance, check it out. If not, check it out after the break. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, shoot me an email. Take it easy. Bye.